Hey guys, um, so, um, yeah, uh, what the hell? Seriously? Okay, um, I, okay, so I'm just gonna get started with stream. I'm really excited, um, I'm really excited for this stream. I'm just re very concerned because it started counting in negative time, and you know when you count in negative time, it's, yeah, it's because you're mm -hmm. well okay so uh i am gonna get started with the uh, the stream i want to talk a bit about uh, about the idea of an animation now to get started then i just realized that i was supposed to go and show you this thing because uh, you can't hear me. What? Hello? Hello? Uh, and yeah, a lot of people that it was a girl because of my OC and, uh... Sorry, I just... I'm just not very... Uh, okay, so... Yeah, basically I want to get, um... I want it a bit louder? Okay, let me... Yeah, sorry, I'm usually closer to my microphone, but I decided to go with the... And yeah, this is for some pe some of the people who... Corpulent Brony, you disappoint me a lot! How the hell could you forget? Oh god... <laughs> oh my god... This is a really good way to start. But yeah, um, but yeah, let me uh, let me get started a bit on animation. So basically, the um, so basically, Minty Rude, you might have known me for uh, Dinky's Destiny, uh, Good Morning Baltimore, Luna's Determination, which is in pro progress right now. And yeah, this is this is a lot. I'm. Not really used to talk about the subject and what fan animation is. Um, so, so I I like to talk a bit about. Uh, well, I kind of want to talk a bit about how, how I started because basically it kind of helps to give an idea of what I've learned and what I. So, back in the days, just just to give you an idea of how. Back in the days, it is. Back in the days, this was my laptop. It had one gigabyte of RAM. It had 160 gigabytes of hard drive. Uh, uh, 10, 24 by 600 of resolution. It ran Windows XP. That was the that was the laptop I had when I was well, I say when I was starting. That was the laptop I was using when I was working on um, uh, Yuki's Story, uh, which was basically my one of my series of spread animations. And yes, I was doing spread animation before doing puppet animation because I was. Uh, And yeah, this is really an old brick. I'm just I'm just gonna talk. I I won't talk too much about the technology itself because that's not worth it. But it could run Flash and was working a bit on animation. Was also working on animation on my desktop, which was yeah, it was that technology at the time. But I was using Flash, and I I was basically just making some some Flash sprite animated movies because I didn't really have the budget to do. And yeah, I just wanted to show stuff to my friends, and I wanted to, yeah, I wanted to impress my friends and impress some people in line. And the the very first time I got to show uh, uh, spread animation online, uh, my mother was concerned about copyright issues to a point where she thought that it would get sued by Nintendo because there was Nintendo characters in my thing. I think. And yeah, 
so, so yeah, I, I come from a background where sprite animation was there, and I was just doing some, mostly some 2D stuff. Then I started in producing with 3D animation. It was just, it was very basic. The um... <laughs> I can't believe you paid two dollars to say that on stream. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> Good job, dude! Yeah, basically, Yuki's story was the the opportunity I got to uh, produce uh, some two D animation and three D animation, and and yeah, the the technique that I used back in the days was very simple to get three D. I was using Wings three D, which was a very basic three D software. So basically, the way it worked was well, it was just a polygon. Well. Yeah, it was pretty much just making some polygons, texturing them, and that was pretty much it. You you didn't get a lot. The, the, the only thing I could do was pretty much just scenery, and if I wanted more than just the scenery, um, yeah, I, I couldn't. So I limited that to simple camera pans. And the technique that I used to get those camera pans was that I move... I, basically, when you get in a 3D... Uh, software you just move the camera a bit uh, and that was it i was moving camera a bit manually with my mouse and was filming it with the screen recorder just to get that 3d done and then i would go place a frame at one point play it, uh, place the frame at another just tween a bit just to match the two it was hard but just it was worth it then i then i realized with uh, thanks to uh someone i've met at college who at college who was, was uh, more interested in the animation than me and yeah it was modeling um, the character I don't remember who but I think it was an anime an anime character and it just showed me blender and it just it just showed me the basics putting some keyframes there and there and that was about it I was really happy to get uh, get that tool just to get the camera to move it uh, to move a bit more to my freedom to animate it like I would animate it in so so yeah the um that's where I found out I really liked to do um, to do that to mix 3D and 2D because I found that 3D had some depth oh and the template itself actually it's someone else I'm going to give the credit in the description but um yeah I didn't do the uh... but yeah the i that's pretty much where i started and that, that's where where i found about the animation of the show because my best friend had all these pony pony figurines laying around i started asking for the um yeah i started asking why the hell he had ponies there and he introduced me to the um he introduced me to, to to the show, and I found out it was animated in Flash. And since Flash was the animation software I used to do my two D animation that I posted on Newgrounds, I I was really excited. I could prove myself, do something that was close to what they did professionally, and do it my own style. Because uh, one one of the things I found out about the uh, well, that what I I found out over the years before going to a pony fandom was that people liked a lot more if I tried to be my own instead of just trying to copy the the style of what was popular. So um, because back in the days there was um, we there was just um, there was one guy who did his sprite animation series which was a crossover between Sonic and Mario inspired by Dragon Ball. And it was so so much of a hit that people would start making copycats of it, and 
and was there maybe i yeah maybe i could uh, do something different so so yeah that's what made me realize that i could do my own style and yeah that that's what pushed me to try to make my my own pony projects and that's where i did project undercloud the very first one and yeah that's that was my introduction the introduction to the fandom itself and i, I kind of want to talk a bit about how people can get the produce that uh, because back in the days uh, when i was working on sprite animations uh, since sprite animation was not too, that complex to do it was mostly well it was complex for me because i didn't know any better but i could pretty much just write the i, I could pretty much just write the script as i was animating it because i couldn't i could just delete some scenes i was not happy with and was not yeah, it was not as much of a big deal. So when it came to Project Under Cloud, I had to make a script before him because the production, I knew that it would take a few months, but I didn't storyboard it at all. And the part where I get, uh, the part where I got to do some storyboarding, uh, well, it came back in 2015. And I guess I could show you a bit uh, storyboard how it, uh, There we go. This one is big one because it's really um yeah it's it's almost half a gig of uh it it might crash my flash actually since it's uh well flash is about to crash. I'm gonna set my webcam hard. Yeah. So basically um Making an animatic is really the um, it's the easy step of the uh, the process. Uh, basically, well, I say easy. It's it's still hard because if you you want to get something cohesive and you want to follow the, you, you just have to sketch out what you want in that frame. Like, um, um, well, I will try to avoid the spoilers for that because the. Uh, so I'm just gonna cover a bit the first shots. So basically, the um, the way I wanted to introduce the, the very first scene was to get the um, to to get a shot of the moon just through the crack of the castle, and just a pan down just to reveal the um, just to reveal a light crack as Luna just came in. And the very first version of that scene, uh, instead of uh, having a match cut where I went from this shot to the other like that, actually uh, the uh, that shot itself, let's find back the original version, which was really different because I went with some with a lot of uh, duration, like that. just like it's like that, and that shot worked. It, it, would have been fine well maybe not to me but it would have been fine in another project but yeah that i yeah, had to do something a bit more unique that i wouldn't matter to me so i started making more and more versions and i dropped that so i started prototyping the uh, because basically the animatic since i go and do that in flash Basically, I'm just throwing ideas together with the script I have. Just throwing the because basically the um, well, how could I say that? Basically, it's safer to do something very very rough, but that just flows with the uh, like because if if I go just with that. That's a very simple prototype of the, um, of the animation. You don't... You get the, the feeling of the animation right away and there's nothing animated yet. 
So, so basically that's that, and you think, well, I kind of suck at animation, and I don't really know how to start start with an animatic. It's going to give you the idea and the flow of how an animation goes. So it goes from that version, which is, which is kind of fine, but to, to that version right there. Egg. Like that. Oh my god, my Discord notifications, let me... Sorry about that. Disturb. What the hell did you send me, Scope? Oh... <laughs> but yeah, the... Um... But yeah, the, the process itself is just a prototype, so I get the um, so I get all the scenes how I want it. For example, this shot where you get Luna who's wa walking, and yeah, that's the animatic. How and a lot of people um, so I so it's some kind of complaint, but when they they say animatic online, yeah, it's true, it's an animatic, but they. It's more, more of a motion comic that they do, and they try to get the, um... <laughs> they, they, basically, they do a motion comic and they call it an animatic, and both are fine, but if you're gonna go with an animatic that you don't even expect to, um... that you don't expect to animate, kind of goes... Yeah, I'm complaining for nothing, because that's not really much of an issue, but you'd think... Has anyone told you to look like a second-rate Harry Styles of One Direction? Oh god, I should have known. Also, is it One Direction like... a few months old and nobody talks about that? I mean... But yeah, the... Uh... Basically, the first step is that the animatic, you, and some uh, some people wonder uh, how they can get started. Just uh, just with Flash that I'm using right now, uh, for example, if you are, you have for example just a shot, um, just just let me, let me sketch that quickly. So you have so you have Princess Celestia who is in that frame. She looks. Those are her eyes. Just have, and I'm really sketching it out. It it can be bad. Don't worry about that. Just just get a bit the proportions right. So you get you get her. She's there, and actually she's smiling. She's calm. Everything is there. Her clothes. She's in the frame. I copy those frames a bit for long. Just create another clip. Uh, just an idea of the background, how it's going to be framed. So I get just the door, for example. I get that door, please, like that. And I'm going in red because that's the default color that I put. So yeah, it's, it's very simple, but you get the idea of the scene. And you... Uh, like that. So you just go... You frame and... You have Luna who's there. Screen. And you go with an arrow just to get an idea. She's coming from there. And it's, it's very simple, and she's there, she's panicking. And the, the, the weird problem, though, I had with, uh, with well, all the animatics I've done is that it's kind of hard to differentiate between... Uh, 
yeah. It's kind of hard to differentiate between Luna and Celestia in animatic form because that's basically two characters who are... Well, they mostly have the same shape, but not the same size. So yeah, it's not really much of a problem. You can change the color from that. You, you can color your animatic as much as you want. Go with some... That. You put that in blue, so you get there. You, you, you just get your scene, so you have... You have here. You have Celestia, who's just counting down, and you have background, and you have Princess Luna that storms set, and you have you can set a bit how you wanted her to storm, and she gets there, she runs, ducks, and she gets the. She gets there. That's very fast. That's very, very, very fast. But yeah, you have her and she's panicking. Help! The cakes have been taken! And you have so you, you have Celestia who's, who's just not worried. And just You get the scene and you just start watching, right? You pace the flow and... So you get the idea. You get the idea of the scene just like that. And I had a few animators who who said, "Well, I know what I know exactly what I wanted the scene to be like, so I don't need to storyboard it." But you just realize, what if you change your mind? What if you realize, no, I don't think this shot works right because the main the the, the main character in that shot is not well. The the main character in that shot is not supposed to be Celestia, but Luna. So you have to you have to change it. Right away, you have to throw everything out just to get uh, to get back that scene. But instead, you have Celestia, who's there. That just in her eyes. Like that. And yeah, that's really, really rough as a, a scene right now. So I'm just going like that. Just going, and there's her throne. That. So this throne, if I remember, it's like And so you have that scene. Just goes. You have Luna that just storms in like that. Really? So you get the you get basically the same scene where you have um, you, you get basically the same scene where you have Princess Celestia sitting there uh, and her chips uh, no actually uh, actually I'll need to look it up sorry like that so so you you get you get that scene right now where you have Celestio still sitting there. She's basically framed in one of the uh, thirds, and yeah, the rule of thirds and um, is basically a photography rule. It's, it's well, I say rule. It's more a rule of thumb. You go, for example, you just go with. Um... Okay, so you go with a point. Just look at my my webcam. The point is right there. For example, I'm going to put it here, like that. And for example, I'm going to go and put back in back in the background like uh, that. Just put some someone who's really behind. And basically, you put it like that. You 
you put do those elements like that and the framing looks good. But it's, it's a rule of thumb, once in a while you might want to put the character in the middle because that's really the focus and nothing else matters. And that's fine on, on its own. So, but the thing is that I've done in less than 10 minutes, I changed the entire framing of this scene just, just by going because I thought, I thought that it would go like this. And in fact, I thought I realized that this framing worked better. And there's no true rule with that. That's just make they're just making the animatic, which is basically a prototype. And once in a while, if you have a 3D model of the scene that you want to work with, um, you might want to place that that to change a bit your framing. You're gonna go and prototype the. Um, and yeah, I say a lot prototyping because that's what it is. You you want to get the idea, and you you'll never ever get perf uh, the perfect thing uh, the first way. Like um, uh, let's... oh, I don't have it. Never mind. So basically, uh, when you're gonna uh, go, uh, for example, uh, those are the rigs that I've done for Princess Luna, which is 360 rig. Uh, let me find a shot that is early. Yeah, I might show you this. What? No. Okay, this one, where uh, in that in that original shot, um, Did. Basically, in this shot right there, I just had Princess Luna was looking in ba the background. She turns her head to Star Swirl, who was here, and she just he just asks what's going on. And I was working a bit in that scene. I was making the key poses, which is basically the uh, basically the uh, idea. Of so I go and pose how I think Princess Luna should be like. So I go with uh, so I go with this, this, because at the very beginning I thought uh, at the very beginning I thought maybe she could just turn her head, and it just came to me. No, it needs to be something a bit more brutal because she's in panic. She runs to Star Swirl like this. Uh, started sketching the uh, as well, I started sketching the entire movement. So I go like that, and basically that's uh, that's that scene so far. And the reason why I sketch out the the well, that's stupid. But the reason why I start sketching out over my poses to get an idea of how they're gonna move is that not only can I retime the those poses without worrying about the um, because basically the animation ring rig desyncs if I go and change the timing of the part and that's that's one of the things I've been worried about um, in that shot so I started sketching out and if I want for example just this shot where she's in profile I just sketch it out I just oh my god I don't want to be compared to Leafy and no I don't like Leafy because he has no chin. <laughs> but but yeah. But yeah, basically uh, the, the idea is that that way I can sketch out how I want that pose to look like more than what I think the, uh, the rig should be like. So I might have the extremes that are basically the rig uh, that I pose myself, so that way I Keep something a bit more cohesive and more, um, well, more cohesive, more realistic to the show style. But then again, then again, once in a while, I change uh, some of the poses. Like uh, if I look a bit at, uh, like this, this pose going from this to this. Uh, so it means just tweaking a bit the angle. 
uh, that that pose like that. But the mouth is a bit more to the back, just to get just to get that angle like that. She's leaning forward, even though she's on the side, because I because I really want to show that she's um, as she's leaning forward that she's. Um, He's not, he's going to him instead of, so you really see who is leading the scene. Not the, the one that is leading the scene is not uh, Star Swirl who's just telling Luna that she can do it, but Luna is telling him that she, that she can't. So she goes, she, she goes with the movement, she moves forward because she's just, so he, he leans in just to give, just to tell her. And as she leans in, she feels it. She goes a bit more to her heart. And she just, she just lets it in. And yeah, those are mostly the key, the keyframes in yeah, I uh, there's a lot of people who already said that, and um, but movement because uh, a lot of people when they go with uh, movement they go um, uh, they go with so they said this is the starting finish so I I need to go to that in eight frames so I go one. They go with that. That that's a very very linear movement. So I can once in a while. So instead, uh, some movements. If I go with the um, that movement, I could go with the uh, deceleration. So I go this frame, this frame, this frame, and that that point it just hits. Since it hits, it's gonna go with an accent like uh, reset my webcam so. You so if it goes between this point, so if it goes between this point, this point, okay, left-handed, well, not left-handed. If I go and I just go, nothing, it's gonna look bland. For example, if I go, like that, you, you already feel, for example, it's a punch, but if you go and you go, and the accent itself is how this one is gonna react, for example, or how this one is gonna react and impact. So if it goes, you, you already feel like something like uh, some foam. So if, uh, so if it goes back and, like that for like a spring or like a bouncing ball that's the accent how it's gonna go like um well i go with it i go and call it the accent but for example um my uh one of my animation teachers was because i'm an animation student i am not perfect because i learn but i get to learn from people so, for example, if you go with a hammer, hit something, and you just shake like that as the the hammer hits, that that's the accent, and that's the thing that will matter a lot with the animation. So, when I go with the uh, the poses, one of the things I'm always concerned about is, uh, for example, just to go, just to go the way she goes. <gasps> So if you feel, for example, that there's a de deceleration, the way it's going to decelerate, well, the way it's going to bounce back, it's going to it's going to change a lot how we feel the um, how we feel the uh, animation. If I go, uh, I make her just run back, and as she runs, she turns her head, and as she turns her head, she leans in like that. Like that, it's gonna feel a lot different than if she stops. And yeah, that's pretty much just acting with the animation. And 
that's one of that's one of the reasons why uh, when I go to see some movies like um, uh, when I'm taking of Zootopia, they talk they talk about the actors that were involved in the movie, and uh, I'm just quite disappointed that we talk a lot. Well, that when we talk about the actors, we don't talk about the animators who put a lot of emotion more than just what the voice acting gives. And I don't have anything against voice actors for your work because they still do work, but a lot of people think that the uh, the, uh, uh, the characters are their voices, but if you if you saw Pinkie Pie that talked like Pinkie Pie but move like Rarity, you wouldn't believe it. Okay, maybe you would think, okay, it's Pinkie Pie that imitates Rarity, but but yeah. There, there's that. There's design, the way you, the, the way you go with the curves. Uh, for example, uh, with Star Swirl, I I went and designed him with curls and uh, sharp ends, just to give the idea of something a bit messy, but still a bit. It feels a bit like clouds, and that's yeah, that's fluffy, still rough. And yeah, that's just how the, the characters are animated. Uh, there's also the part where I decide for the um, uh, the choice of colors, like um, mine. mine. Oh, by the way, this is the archive of the entire project, where I store every every single thing. Uh, there's a there's a library of fan arts that I'm trying to get inspired by because. I, I look at fan art and thinking, this is how I want it to look. So I start making a mood board and uh, ma making an idea of what I want. And that's a lot of fan arts and that's, uh, well, a lot of fan art and a lot of actual art. Like, uh, for example, this, um, this art of Red of the Wild, where I, I just thought that this would be the, the idea of what I want the, um, the light of the sun to be. Like, because I, I don't want to be to the sun to be just a big point in the sky because that's beautiful, but I don't, I don't want to go with the duality between the sun and the moon, like in other projects like that. <laughs> oh, and Children of the Night, because that's good. Because I thought, well, I don't want to imitate them because it would be a bit... Uh, because they helped me a lot with the, um, uh, the duo cartoonist helped me a lot with the uh, the design, well, the design, design of the animatic. And yeah, I was just looking a bit how they managed to make something show style, but still, it would still feel more, um, yeah, a bit more pain like. So that's the ideas that I. I had uh, there was um, the the matte painting tests or the yeah I'm feeling bad because I don't remember this one that I was uh, working on for the um, that that was working on for the um, uh, the trailer. Which is very, it's very simple, it's particles and all, but uh, the idea of how the dark tones would be almost pitch black, while the, the light would be very, wouldn't feel bright, it would feel maybe light blue, but that's all. Just to give the idea of darkness and uh, the contrast very, so you don't, you don't feel a lot the colors between the two, you feel a bit of of purple but mostly blue very desaturated for the night just to, to get the idea but to, not to make it feel dark or nothing but uh, at the same time making this the happy scenes a lot brighter that that's one of the things i've been wor worrying about for that project because i wanted I, I don't want it to just bring the colors that look good but not feel feel good for, for the tone. So that's one of the things of the... Uh, and you might think that seems hard to do, but... 
but yeah, that's that's a bit the project and and yeah, making fan animation is making a lot of tests, and there's nothing wrong with taking making steps to try what you want to it to look like, and if you realize at one point, okay, this this looks good, but this won't fit for my tone. There's nothing wrong with dropping stuff. That's that's why there's uh, that's why I recommend a lot to make tests. Like, uh, let me find it back. Scenes. Like uh, when I was working on the um, uh, the concepts where. Uh, so this is uh, this is a, the the concept that I've done. The... Oh, I'm gonna insert that. This is well. So basically, this is what I sketched out for the uh, the scene that was really hard to follow, and this is what I sketch out later for that same scene. And yeah, that that's very very simple, but that gives me a lot and a lot of room for what I want it to be like. And yeah, the animation software that I use for the animation, uh, I use Flash for the characters because, well, because basically that's what I've learned for years. Uh, after, well, and after, basically, I, I think I'm gonna sketch it out because it's a bit complex for. Me. So I go with Flash first. Um, so Flash is well. Flash is basically my um, anima uh, my character animation software for two D. Uh, there's the three D where where I go with um, with Maya. I do some renders just to get the the background, to see how it looks like. Um, well, uh, get the the angle and just to match them. Um, what I go with the animation Flash, I go with uh, After Effects. After Effects is a compositing software. So I get, uh, for example, I go with, um, uh, so my input. Uh, merge, escape. It shouldn't take too long, but basically Adobe After Effects takes the layers in Flash just stack, stacks them in compositing or because there's a lot of effects that I cannot just do in flash uh, so I go with the uh, the backgrounds in Maya and I go and bring them in Photoshop so uh, let me find find uh, the concepts because basically the backgrounds uh i'm not the only one who does that so basically the uh that's the one oh that's not the one that that one was a test that i've done actually that's a good example that, that's one of the tests that i've done i basically took a 3d render that looked like that, and I wanted to see how it would look again with some um, with some uh, well, with some effects and all, and it looked like that, and it looked good, but it didn't look good enough for what I wanted to. Do. So I dropped that. So it maybe might have took me a few few hours that I that felt lost, but. Yeah, I started. I started with just this 3D render, which which looks fine, and and yeah, the the 3D render itself looked fine. There was the lighting that was on the right side. Then I went Photoshop to get uh, to give the colors, to just put some some effects and all. And yeah, basically I put that in Photoshop. And so basically, I rendered uh, the, the just a plane, and I render some depth. So I, I get uh, I basically get the angle of the camera. Just um, it just renders the plane from that angle, 
and I get the depth, which is a map. Basically, the, the things that are the closest are going to be brightest. The things that are the hardest are going to be darkest. Or the other way around, because I always forget about that. So basically, you, so basically you get the map. You just extrude the, the depth for that picture. So you get a picture that is 2D. But still, it feels like painting with some depth. And that depth I do in After Effects, so I bring those, I bring those backgrounds which are actually 2D, and I make them feel back 3D. If I go with uh, After Effects, I go back and render. Um, After Effects gives me video files. Uh, Flash gives me um, just vector animation files, which are basically just. I, I cannot do anything about uh, with that. I cannot send them to YouTube. So I need to take that SWF file to, um, I need to take it to Premiere Pro, well, to, to After Effects to render it. Then I go with the, uh, yeah, so basically uh, what is there is SWF. You cannot, you cannot put that on YouTube. Uh, go with After Effects. Uh, usually I, I render uh, .mp4, but Actually, I'm changing that for my next project because it's going to be. So I go with uh, effects. I go with Premiere Pro. Uh, uh, Premiere Pro is really the uh, editing software. It allows me to go and put all my clips of all the scenes together. And uh, uh, there's one thing that is great with that is that I can keep the animatic. Just fix that one, just to compare. How the animatic worked and how the, uh, the actual animation fit again because basically i'm just taking the animatic that was crudely drawn and i worked over i work over it because the um <clears throat> while the animatic was crudely drawn it it would fit the the tone i wanted to fit so so after that i can just put the animation over it that's it and yeah, that's that's the editing process. And yeah, there's a lot of people who talked about it, but the um, Premiere Pro, you just render. Um, that, well, you just render that file to basically to YouTube. Uh, usually, I go with uh, that M4, and I render it. <clears throat> Settings V. And yeah, the, the, that, that's the settings that I go with uh, Premiere Pro. Because basically, uh, what I want is the highest quality footage from After Effects, so Premiere Pro doesn't ruin it, the, the export. Yeah, basically that's some complex things, but I have to take, I have to take all these software, and, and that's the pipeline. That's a very simple pipeline, because there's some people who just go and they they, they just do all the animation with all the characters to well basically they put the puppets in the same the same animation file for all the shots and they do the uh, editing within the animation software which is fine for most people but you don't get those effects like um, I was working on that uh, the other day um, basically I wanted to go with that look it was kind of fine but still felt a bit uh, plastic to that which is which might take a yeah it take forever to explain but yeah i went to school for that for a long time yeah it takes a long time so yeah the just to put some filters to get the um that paint look that i want and uh <clears throat> 
And yeah, basically that's that. And just a lighting, you cannot do that in Flash. Well, you can, but it's gonna be a pain. So you, so yeah, you get those, you get those filters, all in the After Effects because Flash doesn't handle that. So, so basically, the um, so basically some people just go with uh, Flash. They take the uh, .swf in Swivel, which renders a dot or then they send to. Well, the end and they send to YouTube, and that's all. And I say YouTube, but it could be anything. And there's nothing really wrong with that skipping that process, because some people don't really care that much about the lighting. Actually, I think uh, I'm thinking of uh, Gen Animation, who well, he's really known for his animation. There's a lot of uh, there. There's a lot of quality to his work, but he didn't put lighting in. Uh, stuff and well that's his choice but if you want a scene with depth because um, for example that shot that was um find that shot actually because the outro animation <clears throat> I, I had an opportunity i'm gonna take it but yeah, the uh, my webcam lags. So yeah, basically the, uh, the animation itself, just that. It was a reflection because the reflection wasn't hard to do. Because basically it's on black, so I could just put some uh, some black with um, well, a black mat with some transparency over it. That would just go with the. Uh, no, actually, I didn't do that. That fun. It was actually. Um, uh, a Babel script, yeah, a fund, a very weird fund, but yeah, the yeah that animation was like that. I wanted some brightness, and so I went with the uh, went with the compositing. Really, let me show you quickly. So, So moon bow and that. Oh my god, I've done that one in the previous version of uh, After Effects, so it might lose the So yeah the um and there was a lot of layers and I kind of forgot to put them back. But you go with some uh, some blurs. Yeah, the um, that's just some some effects I've done. So just to give you an idea, uh, you get the uh, anytime soon. Time soon. Yeah, the, I hate when that happens, but yeah, the um, After Effects takes a lot of time to do. So. But yeah, you get, you go from that scene, best frame to step at. You go from that scene to something that actually looks like this. Just well, just by uh, for example, um, the the lighting. It's it's very simple, uh, actually, when you think about it. But the lighting is pretty much just this shape right there. Uh, well, pretty much just a copy of the shape with some kind of offset to give the rim light. Uh, this part was done with, uh, I just took out the, the green of the main, just some, uh, just some, uh, <clears throat> uh, just some roto to get rid of some artifacts, just to get that side to a softer, and some soft light on the sides, and I just colored that light to fit with that uh, blue, blue uh, white clipping light right there 
just to fit with the uh, and let's see if it like that really just filtered by uh, just by After Effects and that software is the one that is really harder to do and so what I recommend if you want to get started in animation get just started with Flash it's going to be a lot lighter to do if you want some effect, effects there's nothing wrong with that just just get started with Flash and um, uh, what I recommend too I got this one but uh, uh, this is the graphics tablet I use it's really bad and there's nothing wrong with that if you, if you want to go with uh, some puppet animation you don't need a very expensive tablet and yes I I know that I could try something a bit different uh, there's flash that actually has a the demo well, a trial that is available. It's either 30 days or, se or 7. It's, it's not a lot, but if you want to get started. Um, and yeah, the, it's a bit expensive unless you go with the, stu the student. Well, the, the student discount. But yeah, it's, it's, worth, it's, it's worth going with, uh, with Flash. And never mind, that's okay. But yeah, the the process of animation is it seems very tough, very scary, and I I understand that. I I recommend to and yeah, there there's a lot of people who start and they they don't know a lot about animation, so they start drawing stuff that looks like that looks like this, for example, that really looks bad and. They, they think that they'll never ever get any good, and I I guess say if you want to get anywhere with animation, you need to start somewhere. I had my moments where I was really really bad, and yeah, that 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 made me feel bad at the very beginning because I thought that talent was a thing. Yet yeah, talent was really a thing that you were born with. You just went with the computer if you were really good everything would come by magic and yeah just realize over time no it's not the case you get you just get good you learn by learning about life and so yeah i just started i just started with some spread animation found ponies and wanted to do more so i went to a 3d animation school. and yeah my portfolio was really bad there was some there, there was some ponies in it. There was some backgrounds I've done in Blender. It, they still let me in. It was really bad. It was the the very bottom of the list. I had to prove myself. And yeah, the, what I gotta recommend with animation is that you you don't have to learn animation. You have to learn how to learn animation. You need to look at life as it is. What you see of life. What you find beautiful about your about life, try to deconstruct what is that good. You need to look outside to look at all the colors. Just look at looking at them to just finding a beauty of the uh, and just finding the beauty how to reproduce it. Like the um, you need because basically you need to deconstruct it to go and go back and making those sketch how you feel the, the scene would go because you feel the characters well basically the story you want to tell because basically you feel it would be natural as a viewpoint you'd be there you'd see light, that you'd see the light from the side and you just realize over time that the light would soften because it's that time of the day it's that angle they have that kind of fall off because you've seen that in real life, or you've seen another artist who tried that on his own, and just look gorgeous, just, and you, and you feel like, well, you just feel the animation because you're constructing a real, you're constructing a, fic, a fictional world. You wanted to make it feel real. And yeah, animation is about bringing that, that to life. It's a lot about technology that 
that you use. A lot about um, how it just when I was about to say with the accent, just how to make things feel real, just the way that they move, just the um, and yeah, that that stuff. That's and there's stuff you just forget about. You you feel bad about it because you think that it's um it's something that's just obvious and you just yeah and yeah it's been about an hour and I don't want to go with the but but yeah I, if if you have more questions subject don't be afraid to uh, to go and just ask me or another animator or a friend maybe once in a while the the actual answer comes from asking a friend about what he thinks about something because he has a different viewpoint of real life. But real life, well, it's real life, so he has a different viewpoint of the same thing. So, so yeah, you don't want to get started in animation. Just build up on your life. So yeah, I want I want to share. Uh, yeah, I, w I want to share a bit more about you. But yeah, my time is a bit. Uh, my my time has come. But yeah, if you want to get started in animation, there's nothing preventing you to, to do that. My, my look, the, the very first desktop I I got. Well, say so I got the very first desktop I got to run Flash. Nowadays, I bought I bought this tablet that runs Windows. It um, uh, it cost about a, a hundred dollars. It's really it was really cheap. That thing can run Flash, so there is no excuse. So you, yeah, you, you you can go and sketch or draw and or build your own puppets. Just get to tell the the one story you have in mind. Yeah. So, but yeah, uh, I won't. I won't go for too long. So, it's been nice. It's been nice talking to you, and it's been, uh, yeah, it's been a pleasure. So, see you soon.